there's a monster that lives under the hood of one of the greatest cars ever built. It doesn't roar. It sings. It doesn't shake the ground. It whispers secrets of forgotten engineering. And most people have no idea that it was born from Formula One. This is not just an engine. This is the BMW S70-2 V12, the heart of the legendary McLaren F1. A power plant too ambitious for racing, too advanced for its time, and too mysterious to be repeated. It was forged in the shadows of motorsport glory, engineered with no budget ceiling, and tuned not for the racetrack, but for the open road. A machine so perfect, even Formula One teams couldn't handle it. Yet, it found a home in a civilian supercar that shattered records and rewrote history. This is the story of a beast that shouldn't exist, but does. So, why was it made in the first place? Why did McLaren, a British company with racing DNA, turn to BMW? And what makes this V12 engine still untouchable more than 30 years later? Let's take a journey into the past, where innovation met obsession, and the result was something the world wasn't ready for. BMW has built many legendary engines, the M88 that powered the BMW M1, the silky smooth inline sixes, the screaming V10s of the early 2000s. But when it comes to raw engineering brilliance, nothing comes close to the S70-2. This story begins in the late 1980s, when Gordon Murray, the genius behind McLaren's Formula One dominance, had an idea, a dream that refused to let him sleep. He wasn't just thinking of another fast car. He wanted to build the greatest road car ever made not just a track monster with license plates slapped on. No gimmicks, no compromise. A true supercar, designed from the ground up with obsessive attention to precision, minimalism, and unfiltered speed. A machine that would feel alive in the driver's hands. Something no one on Earth had dared to attempt before. Murray had the architecture. He had the revolutionary design, he had every last bolt in mind. But what he didn't have was a heart. The engine, the soul of the machine, was missing. Naturally, he turned to Honda. It was the obvious choice. They were McLaren's trusted Formula One partners and had proven themselves on the world stage. But even with their cutting-edge engineering, Honda declined. They weren't interested in building an entirely new engine for a one-off road car, no matter how bold or visionary, they didn't see what Murray saw. Out of options and time, Murray turned to Paul Rocha, the engine maestro at BMW Motorsport, a man with petrol in his veins and symphonies in his cylinder heads. Rocha was already busy refining a high-performance version of BMW's V12 for the 850 CSI, a powerful machine in its own right. But Murray wasn't looking for more power, he was looking for magic. An engine with character, with edge, with soul. To Murray's surprise, Rashi said yes. The two struck a deal. BMW would build a bespoke V12 to Murray's exacting specifications. It would be powerful. It would be lightweight. It would be unlike anything on the road. But then, something extraordinary happened. BMW didn't just follow the brief, they exceeded it, quietly, radically, and the result would become legend. The S70-2 was not an evolution, it was a reinvention. Born from the bones of the M70 architecture, this V12 wasn't just enlarged, it was reimagined. BMW took a 5.0-liter base and sculpted it into a 6.1-liter masterpiece. The block, cast from lightweight aluminum, housed forged pistons that could take relentless punishment. The internal components? 
Every piece was motorsport grade, engineered not just for performance, but for endurance, precision, and purity. It featured dual overhead cams and BMW's cutting-edge Vanos variable valve timing, allowing the engine to breathe with remarkable control across the rev range. Dual injectors per cylinder ensured seamless power delivery, one working at low revs to keep things civilized, the other waking up when the engine screamed into high RPMs. This wasn't engineering for the sake of speed. It was engineering for character. But even those innovations paled in comparison to its most outrageous party trick. It boasted 12 individual throttle bodies, each cylinder commanding its own air through a carbon fiber intake manifold, each one with a butterfly valve, opening and closing like mechanical lungs. The throttle response, immediate, unfiltered, violent and beautiful. What came out of it wasn't just power, it was sound. A raw, mechanical symphony of induction noise, unmatched by anything before or since. To keep that V12 alive through high-speed corners, BMW installed a dry sump lubrication system, a racing solution that ensured consistent oil delivery regardless of G-forces. No matter how hard it was driven, the engine remained calm, composed, and perfectly lubricated. And remarkably, it achieved all of this without a single turbocharger. No forced induction, no artificial assistance, just pure, naturally aspirated brilliance. The result? 618 horsepower screaming at 7,400 RPM and a mighty 650 newton meters of torque available at 5,600 RPM, delivered not with lag or hesitation, but with immediate intoxicating force. Murray had asked for 550. BMW gave him nearly 70 more. When he received the prototype, he was stunned. Not just by the raw power it delivered, but by the way it delivered it. It wasn't brutal or untamed. It was controlled, polished, and eerily smooth. Not just an engine, but a revelation. This wasn't just an engine. It was an act of over-engineering. A mechanical masterpiece that pushed beyond expectations in every direction. Power, precision, poise, it had it all, and it came with a twist. A twist that would redefine what a supercar engine could be. Here's the part most people don't know. This engine was never intended for a BMW car. In fact, BMW never used it in anything else. The S70-2 was a one-time creation, built solely for the McLaren F1. Even crazier? It was arguably better than anything BMW made for itself. Mated to a six-speed manual gearbox and a carbon triple-plate clutch, this engine transformed the McLaren F1 into a legend. In 1998, it set the record for the fastest production car in the world, 221 miles per hour or 355 kilometers per hour. That record stood for 12 years. Bugatti eventually beat it with the Veyron, but the F1 held the crown longer than anyone else. And unlike its successors, the McLaren did it with no forced induction, no fancy electronics, just pure analog fury. But why was this engine never used again? The truth is, the S70-2 was too perfect. It was expensive to build, complex to maintain, and it didn't align with the direction BMW was heading. It wasn't made for mass production. It was a one-off symphony composed for a single masterpiece. There were whispers that BMW considered using a variation in future M cars, that they tested prototypes, even rumors of a V16 derived from the same block but none of it ever made it to market. The engine disappeared, just like that. Today, it lives only in the McLaren F1 and a few test mules, a ghost of what could have been BMW's ultimate halo powertrain. We live in a time of electric motors, 
hybrid systems, and software-limited horsepower. But the S70-2 reminds us of something we've lost. Raw engineering. Unfiltered passion. A time when performance wasn't programmed. It was built. It was the kind of engine that could shake your bones and then make you smile like a child hearing music for the first time. So here's the question. Was the BMW S70-2 the greatest engine BMW ever built? Or was it simply the most untouchable? A one-off marvel that can never be replicated, never be rivaled, forever locked in a league of its own? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into forgotten automotive greatness, don't just scroll away. Hit that subscribe button. This is just the beginning. On V History, we uncover the machines, the myths, and the madness behind the cars that shaped history and shattered expectations. Subscribe, like, and buckle up, because the road only gets crazier from here.